Okay, we are going to go over your Unit 7 test, the transformation test. So you should have received back the um, sheet that you took with your test so you can see the answers you put. So a circle is graphed on the coordinate grid with its center at negative 4, 7. A circle will be translated, so we automatically know it's a translation. So we have to have plus and minuses. As you see, all our answer choices have that, so we can't get rid of any. P units to the right. If you are going to the right, we know that means it is positive. And V units down. If we go down, we know that's negative. So we have negative four, which is our X. Our X axis goes right and left. And we're going right. So we're gonna put our negative four there instead of an X plus P units. We don't know how many units that is, so we're just gonna put P. Then our Y in our order pair is seven. So instead of writing the set of Y, we put seven. And we are going down. Our Y axis goes up and down, just like our X axis goes right and left. When we go down, it's our minus, and we're going V units down. This is the only time you're actually gonna write your variable at the end. Usually we have the X in the front and a number in the Y, uh, a number at the end, and your Y up front and a number at the end. But usually it's telling you you're using, moving so many places right and left, but this time we're moving letters. And we start with an order pair instead of your, just your plain X and Y. So, now you're looking for the answer that matches that. Well, negative four plus P, negative four plus P. As you see, C and D are not your correct answers. Now we have seven minus V, mm, not A. So our answer is B. So you need to be very careful about that. Some of you just made the mistake of looking at the first, negative four plus P and didn't look careful at the sign with the seven minus V to look for that. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two was a dilation. Polygon L, M, N, P, Q, R is shown on the coordinate grid and the model is the shape of the garden in the park. We have the polygon will be dilated, therefore we know it's a dilation. Anytime you see that word dilated, we are thinking new over original, which we write as N over O. Be careful with that. You always have to write new over original. With the origin as the center of dilation, to create the polygon, there is your new prime polygon. We are just looking at ordered pair Q. That is all we're looking at. And we know Q prime, which is your new, will be at 21, 7. So your new is at 21, 7. Well, let's look at what our original Q was. Remember, you have to look at your X first. So we walk to six, which is on our X axis, and then we go up two. Now you can choose either one of those numbers to look at, it doesn't matter. I would prefer the smallest one that I don't have to reduce. But let's look at our answer choices. Automatically, we know we are talking about dilation. So when we are talking about dilation, we know we are talking about multiply. So we know we have to have x, y, a number in front of the x, and a number in front of the Y. 
So look at your answer choices. Automatically right there, we have some answers that we can get rid of. Which answers can we automatically get rid of? If you said D and C, you are correct because automatically those cannot be an answer choice because they don't even look like dilation ones. Another thing about dilation, these numbers have to be the exact same number. So I would choose my Y's. And if you look right here, I've already set my new over my original. And so what is it? it they didn't reduce it down. They didn't make it a decimal. So my answer is D. Are they going to have it flipped for you? They are. So you have to know new over original. Let's look at number three. Number three. A, tri a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime was transformed on a coordinate grid using the rule X, Y, negative X, Y. So this is my new, so I'm going to choose point B. So if my new B is at 3, 2, my Y stays the same, and my X would change signs. So then I would plot my new B. And what happened? I see right there that it is flipping across my Y axis. And if my Y stays the same, it is a reflection across the Y axis. So this was a reflection problem. Let's look at number four. A rectangle is graphed on a coordinate grid with four negative six representing the location of the point of the rectangle. The rectangle is transformed by using XY, one third X, one third Y rule. Automatically, I see side by side, which means multiply, which automatically you should know dilation. Okay, let's spell that right. Now, also I see the word scale factor down here. So think of the X factor, which means multiply. Well, if I have one third, what is one third as a number? If you do not know that, you could literally take your calculator and you could do one divided by three and hit enter. Do you see there's a zero in front of that number? So does that tell you that number is less than one? So since it is less than one, is that image going to be smaller or larger? Yes, it's going to be smaller. And why is it going to be smaller? It's not greater than one, and it's certainly not equal to one. Isn't that number between zero and one? It sure is. So that was another dilation. Remember, you had three dilations on your test. Number three. Trapezoid WXYZ was translated. So translation. Guys, this one was amazing. We had over 95% get this one correct. Two units to 
the right. So let's go ahead. I know my x-axis goes right and left. Right is positive, left is negative. My y-axis goes up and down. Up is positive, left is negative. So as I read this, I'm going to write my algebraic representation. Translated two units to the right. I know my x-axis goes to the right. If I'm going to the right, it's positive, and I'm going two units. I've already started writing this. Now, then we're going to go four units up. Up is positive. I know my y-axis goes up. And we're going four units up. I've already, I've got a lot still to read, but I've already written my answer. On a coordinate grid, created the new trapezoid. Write the rule, or your algebraic representation means the exact same thing. So you use the, chop, uh, the correct answer in the drop down menu. So x plus two and y plus four. You have three translations on your test. Most of y'all did really well on that one. And there wasn't even a picture to have to count with. Number six, our last dilation one that was on there. As soon as you see that, new over original. I have my students highlight the original. I then say pick a point or pick where a line's hitting. Do you see this line is hitting at two? So I'd say, okay, let's put a two. That's a good small number. I also see what? Did this image get larger or smaller? It did get larger. So then I know my answer has to be greater than one. So if I look at my answer choices down here, I could get rid of some of these that mean less than one. So I wouldn't make that silly mistake. If you do not know that two thirds is less than one, you could take your calculator and do two divided by three and hit enter. And do you see there's a zero in front of that decimal? So automatically I know that's less than one. Now, as you see right here, let me take a different color instead of an orange. As you see right here, I took this side right here. So I have to take the same position on my new one. So if that was two, where is it sitting on my new line? What number is it sitting at? You're correct if you said three. So I've already got my answer there three over two. So whatever your scale factor is, you put that in front of the X and you put it in front of the Y and you're done. Don't change that number. We saw some of that. Whatever it is in front of the X, it has to be that in front of the Y. Now, what if you picked a point? Say I did new over original and say I picked L and say I picked the Y on L and I pick six. And say I picked, this would be nine, I went across and picked nine. So if I do alpha y equal to let it reduce it for you and put nine over six and hit enter, do you see it's gonna reduce it down for you to nine at uh, to three over two? So those were your three dilation that we've already covered on the test. Okay, our first rotation, 180 degrees clockwise. I don't know if your teachers told you, but I have told you, if you have 180, memorize your rule. But I'm gonna show you just in case they haven't. Pick a point. Um, I'm going to pick E, I'm not gonna pick F. I'm gonna just pick E up here. And as you see, I'm going to highlight it. So E is at 
negative two, you could have picked F. I thought it was at negative one, one, but it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna pick F, which is at negative three, seven. So F is at negative three, seven. Now, it says clockwise. How many turns is 180? Two. Clockwise, two turns. Clockwise is right. So watch how I'm gonna do this. I'm actually gonna turn my paper two turns right. Then I'm gonna have to ignore the numbers. One and two. Now I pretend those numbers aren't there. On the star test, you're just gonna have graph paper so that you just write a X and Y axis and you won't have to worry about it. I am now in quadrant four. So I know I have a positive and negative order pair. One, two, three, I'm at positive three, negative seven. I also know when rotating, 90 and 270 flip-flop. 180 does not. They are in the same position, 3737. I now look. Did my X's stay the same sign? No. If you say no, you throw a negative. Did my negative stay the same sign for my Y? No. I had a 7 and a negative 7. Always, 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 it will never change. It will always be negative X, negative Y. Negative X, negative Y. Just memorize it. So that was rotation. You had two rotation on your test. Okay. Triangle ABC was transformed on a coordinate grid using the rule XY. X, negative Y. X, Y, X, negative Y. We want to locate A prime. So I need to look at A. My order pair for A is negative three, negative one. So look at your new rule. My X will stay the same. My Y will change signs. My X will stay the same. Do you see my Y was negative and, I'm, and my Y was positive and I'm going to change it? So it was negative, so the opposite of negative is positive because you're multiplying by a negative one. And so negative one times negative one is a positive one. Also, if your X stays the same, you're flipping across the axis. This is a reflection across the X axis. Another thing. If you knew you were flipping across the x-axis, you could do this. Your x stayed the same. You see a is down one position. What's the opposite of down one? Up, up one. That should have been an easy, easy one. So be careful with which line you're reflecting across. Number nine. Remember to get rid of answers that do not make sense. We have talked about and talked about and talked about 270. Your rules automatically flip flop. I know in my class, we've also talked about you have to have one negative when it flip flops. It can never, never, never be both positive or both negative when it is flip flopped. So automatically, you should know that's your answer. But let's look at this just so you know why that is your answer. 
let's look at S, because we had quite a few that missed this one, that that should have automatically been a get rid of those answers that automatically can't be it, and there it was. Okay, S is negative 3, 2. We are going 270 counterclockwise. 270 is three turns. Counterclockwise is left. So you are going to take that paper and you're going to turn it three turns left. One, two, and three. So the top of your paper should look like that. Okay? So here we go. We are now in quadrant one, so that your picture should be in quadrant one. So we're going to have a positive, positive. So I am at now positive two, positive three. Positive two, positive three. My numbers flip-flopped, right? As we just talked, they should. Now, don't say, but look, they're both positive, so my answer should be positive. No, no, no. That has nothing to do with what these letters are. I have to look, did my sign stay the same? Yes, so I leave that Y alone. Now I look at this, did they stay the same? No, so the three gets a negative. I'm sorry, the X gets a negative, not the three. The X gets a negative, that's why D is your answer. It has nothing, that rule has nothing to do with these numbers up there. It's just which one changed signs, okay? Because right here, that doesn't have a negative, but we have a negative three right there, but this is always positive x, y. So that was your other rotation. You had two of those. And let's look at number 10. Now we had more missed this one than the other one. This is translated. We had about 86% get this one right, which was interesting. You did better when you didn't have a picture, when you just had words. You didn't even need this picture. Here's the words that told you exactly what to do. Remember, X, positive, negative. Your Y axis goes up, positive, and down is negative. You do not even need to look at that picture because it tells you words right here. Six units to the left. My X axis goes right and left. Left is negative, six units. I went four units up. My Y axis goes up, four units plus four. I know up is four. Now, you should not have even thought about looking at A or B. Because right there, that is no kind of transformation that we have talked about when you have different numbers. That's not even dilation. So automatically, we could get rid of those. So do you see your answer was D? Now, you could have counted those. But you have to remember, you have to start at your original. That's what got some of y'all. When you don't start at your original, you're going to get the opposite in there. You're going to have that to get you. Okay. From your S, you went up. Up is your Y. And you went up. Up is positive 4. You then turn and went left, left is negative, six. So you have to be careful. If you went the opposite direction, that was how you'd get C. So be very, very careful. Do you see how the words would have been better to use instead of looking at the picture so you wouldn't have gone the wrong direction? So your retest will be tomorrow. Make sure you practice. Ask your teacher if you have any questions.